and you go crazy. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. I ain't know we got T Slick in here, man. You already know that. The one and only left eye. You know I'm coming, man. T Slick, what you want, gang? I ain't no shit. I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling good to be back. For sure, so that, man. Uh, welcome to DJ UTV, first and foremost. It's definitely a blessing to have you. You know yeah. that. And secondly, man, welcome home. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. For sure. I heard it's been a long, long time. <laughs> Too long. Too damn long. Uh, when I when I when I would look at your face, brother, uh, it reminds me of uh, Chief Keith Twitter profile picture. Sure. See what I'm saying? Uh, Chief Keith had you as his profile picture, damn near the whole time. Shit, damn near the whole time he been on Twitter. Yeah, that's my brother, man. Yeah. So we definitely uh, interested in the uh, the T Slick story today, man. Uh, tell us what side of Chicago you're from. The one and only, south side, from the Met building, man. But you know I jumped in that water real early, man. Real early. Now, 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 now you say the Met building. For, for, for those that don't know the lingo, what's the Met building? 6217. Okay. The projects. Yeah, the projects. 6217 South Calumet? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So them same projects like Lil Reese from? Exactly. Yeah? Yeah, that's my brother too. Yeah. Yeah. We just interviewed somebody else on the projects. Uh, FYBJ Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's somebody you grew up with too? Yeah, man. Yeah. You grew up in the Calumet Builders? Hell yeah, I grew up in the Calumet Builders. A lot of motherfuckers y'all probably know from the Calumet Builders. I'm from them grade. Like, that's how motherfuckers like, damn, folk, you grew up in the Calumet Building? Ain't Lil Reese from over there? Mm -hmm. Um, How the fuck you so cool with Duck? Damn, once you. I know you. This what you should be with fooling up. It hit different. <laughs> Damn, so all y'all was running wild in the, in the same building. I want to say we was all running wild, but we was running. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, what was it like, though, growing up in the, in the projects? Shit. You know, the projects, the projects. Nothing. Trying to get everything. That's what it was like, shit. Being who you is and where you from. That's about it. Nah, nah, when Reese sat on that couch and he told us about the buildings, he said J Man used to get beat up a lot. Is that is that true? He was he lived on the 13th floor, I ain't gonna lie. That nigga one of my cousin, he just was one of the little shorties in the building. And he used to get beat up. Yeah. He know he used to get beat up. <laughs> See a nigga wanna beat me up, bro. He used to get beat up, bro, in the building, bro. <laughs> For real, bro. Beat him. So, so FYBJ man used to get beat up in man, the Calumet building. Man, I asked him, did he use, did he ever win a fight in that? Bitch? He ain't win not one fight. <laughs> he know he ain't win not one fight. <laughs> hey, see what he said is what he said. Uh, I, was, I mean, I was wondering, you know. But um, tell us how did your how did how, how did your eye get messed up? How old were you? Cause we heard it from somebody else, you know what I'm saying? Right. It do hit different. Folks told us the whole story. <laughs> this the same bruh bruh that you, you, you said he, he didn't want to knock Slick Eye out? Yeah, it, it hit different when you say he knocked his eye out. It hit different. Um, Slick Eye, it hit different. When it fell out, he picked that bitch up, it hit different. Go to the hospital. Yeah. Really? Huh? THF bro, bro, bro had an oh, iron cotton rod. Right. Bro, you gotta get the T Slick interview, bro. I got to now. Let me break this shit down, bro. It ain't different. Bro, let's do y'all homework on folding them playing on the porch. Do y'all homework on folding them playing on the porch. Bro, bro, bad as hell, always doing the most. Doing extra shit. Crazy Chris type shit. It hit different when you do extra shit. <laughs> bro, bro, and Crazy Chris just alike, bro. Do y'all homework. Um, bro, bro, cotton rod for no reason. Now, nah, look, bro. It do hit different when... This what bro, bro did, bro. Why the fuck would you have an iron rod and hit T Slick in his eye like this? Like this. Like this. So what he do, bro? It was that he hit his eye, bro. And what happened, bro? What we see, what we see, whoa, DJU. 
A eyeball, bro. A fucking eyeball roll out. We what the fuck? What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? What the fuck? What, the fuck? what is you doing? Eat different with out. That's out, folks. It hit different with slick out on the ground. Um. Folks, get his eye. Now the eye rolling. Do your homework on his shit rolling into the incinerator, bro. His, imagine when the eye rolling. Just picture the eye rolling. Crazy. Can I tell a story? It hit different. Don't whoop me, bro. Do y'all homework on T-Slick eye rolling, bro. All the way to the incinerator on Fortnum. Now, it was a pamper in the incinerator. It was some shit right there, bro. It was some shitty, it was a shitty pamper in the incinerator. That's what a motherfucking eyeball rolled to. I smell an eye. Smell, smell it hit different when I smell like shit. <laughs> I say, slick, I'm going to put your shit back in, gang. <laughs> it hit different. I put folks shit back in. It fell back out. He had to go to the hospital, bro. It hit different when he, that bitch fell back out and he had to go back to the hospital because J-Man couldn't do it right. But he know I got hospital services, bro. Like, everybody know I used to work at the hospital. So I was already training with the BDs back then. <laughs> um, I could put your eye in, gang. That's how I even applied for my job at the hospital, I told them what I did for T Slick. Do your homework on T Slick. They asked me other application ass questions. Do your homework on T Slick. I already put an eye in, bitch. Bitch, I'm, di I'm a doctor, bro. I'm a doctor. I worked my way up to doctor. Sean Cotton always asked, How the f was you turned to a janitor to a doctor, bro? Do your homework on me helping T Slick with his eye. It hit different. Wow. They, they were just amazed that I could even do some shit like that, bro. It hit different. Well, yeah, we definitely got to get T-Slick on the couch now. We want to hear from the horse's mouth, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I was like, you know, we was real young, shit. I was like five. Me and my homie, you know, we f***ing around. He f***ing around and swung the little stick, swiped across my shit. My shit was put out of here since. So he's talking about bruh, bruh? Yeah. Okay. You say you was five years old? Yeah, we was, I was five. Damn, bro, I was, was a baby. Right. Bro, I was a baby. So he hit you with a stick. Yeah, it was like a little curtain rod, broken off a curtain rod, you know? It was sharp at the tip. That motherfucker went across my eye. Mm. And your eye fell out? <laughs> nah, man. Tell his ass stop trolling, oh, man. Okay. Yeah. No more falling out, man. What's wrong with him? <laughs> he said, what you see rolling? I'm like, Yeah, Damn. tell him stop trolling, man. Okay, okay. That's why I said we got to hear You know what I'm saying? So it ain't fall out or nothing? Hell no. Nah. Can you see out that eye? Shit, it fell out. I probably would have been fucked up. Right. Nah, it ain't fell out. Nah, I can't see out of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wow. That's so, cra so that's crazy. So, uh, growing up with one eye, you never walked, yeah. you never wore like the, um, the eye patch? Nah, I, I would before. Right. Yeah, I would before. Yeah, yeah. What's up? I'm going to wear it again. This time he's going to have them baguettes in that bitch. Word. I'm going to wear it again, though. You'll be running like Slick Rick. So is that where you got the name from? <laughs> nah, man. Nah. Okay. Yeah, nah. Okay, where you get your name from then? Shit. Came down from my old man. Actually, though, my granny started calling me that shit first, though, you know? She said I was too slick for my own good. And I just ran with it. Right. So can you tell us around what age did you meet Chief Keith? We were shorties. We were shorties probably like 13, 14, some shit like that. So if I'm 14, bro, it was probably 12. Yeah, we was young. Word. Uh, did he grow up in the county of my business as well? Nah. Okay. Nah. So how did y'all link up? Shit, you know, the old block and that's right there. Right, we always right. been collided with each other, you right, know? Right, So that's how that happened. Right, right. Yeah. And so when we, uh, you know, when we really dig into your story, you know, obviously the, you know, the shooting that took place and had you gone for 10 years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it was at a Chief Keep concert? Yeah, we was going to perform. That's early in his career. Yeah. Okay. It was at Adriana's? I don't even remember where it was at. I can't even, I ain't gonna lie to you. It was here in Chicago though? Yeah, it was in, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell us what happened, because we heard the story like you was shooting to protect Chief Keith, but we also heard a story like it was a shooting that took place and you took the charge for Chief Keith. Mm. So I don't know at all. Like me personally, I don't know what the hell happened. Can you tell us what happened? See, I, I think shit happened. Whatever everybody said happened, let them think what they think happened. Shit. Let's just put it like this. This was 11 years ago right now. I would have did the same thing or whatever they said I did. 
it would have still been what it was. I'm here now, shit. Yeah. When nothing would have changed. Right now to this day, the same shit. So however they want to fabricate that and pinpoint what it was, that's what it was. Yeah. So you doing 10, man, you were sentenced to 20? No, nah, 15. Okay. Did 11. Oh, you did 11? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so in those 11 years, right, what was, um, what was the most valuable thing that you learned? I, ain't, I learned a lot in that moment, for real, like, you know, that shit molded me. It really, like, matured me, helped me think better, you know, make wiser decisions, all type of shit. The time, though, you know, the time really that I really started valuing time, though, you know? That was the importance of it all, though, because you and that bitch, you don't know when you're going. You don't know when you're coming home, you know? You just know you got people waiting on you, you don't even know if you're going to get there or not. So you just in that bitch hoping and praying. So I definitely value my time more than anything in that moment. Yeah. So. Um, what did you do to pass the time? I, I mean, shit, I was still living, though, because I had niggas on the outside waiting on me, so I'm living through them. I ain't really do too much in that, you know. Probably read, worked out, jail shit, but not the jail shit that these niggas be into. Right, not none of that booty shit, right? Yeah, hell not, not that type of jail shit. I'm just, as you know, finding my way in that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Time be easy though, man. Motherfucker make it hard for him. Yeah. So. How long would you say into your sentence, or how long were you locked up, period, before you, like, just accepted that, you know what I'm saying, this is where you, you know, finna be sleeping at for a while? I ain't gonna lie, when I first got booked though, like, I ain't even see 10 years in that you know? But like, at three years, I'm like, yeah, this is where I'm at, you know? Okay. That's when everything started changing for me though, because my first, my first two, two and a half years in that motherfucker, sick, all type of shit, I ain't give a fuck about nothing. My mentality was still fucked up, you know? But after three years though, I'm like, yeah, I, now I gotta go ahead and get some up out this shit, you know? Okay. So like three years, that's when everything changed for me. Okay. So tell us about them first three years, because I heard you just say, you know, your mentality was still fucked up. What you was, what, what, what was going on? What was your mindset back then? Fuck shit. I, don't, I ain't give a fuck about nothing. How you, how the fuck, you finna tell me what to do, shit. You can't tell me what to do out there in the street, so I ain't care. I came in that bitch, I'm fighting, I'm fighting drama. They talking about 120 years in the dough. I'm, shit, I don't give no fuck about nothing. You know? So it was just like shit. Whatever happened, happened. That's how I felt. Word. So I imagine I imagine you was fighting a lot. You sound like you was frustrated. Man, shit happened. Shit shook. It, it's jail. Mm -hmm. A lot of dumb shit happened, a lot of you know? So what was the turning point after those first three years in which your mentality was fucked up? What was the turning point, you know, that, that made you start straightening up? Like I say, bro, them steady telling me, like, you know, be cool, you know? You'll be home, so that's what I'm counting on, coming home to the life that I set to live, you know? So it was like, all right, I got to chill. Around, I just seen so many niggas get new charges, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas in there beating their murders, beating their attempts, and got jailhouse cases, still can't come home. Mm. You just be the 9-1, bro. You still can't come home because you done got so many stab assaults and shit, you know? That shit's stupid to me. Bro, so that's when I was like, sit down, let's just, now nah, let's just get this out the way. Yeah. Bro. And how was it, you know, being locked up and knowing that the niggas that you grew up with, they outside going crazy, like they turning up, like they <laughs> really got the whole country on fire. Man, it was, it was bittersweet, you know? Mm -hmm. That shit was bittersweet because it's like, damn, I'm supposed to be there. But they let me know this shit here, you know? It's gonna be here. This shit ain't going nowhere, you know? Yeah. And I was just, them holding me down and keeping me sane, I was good. I was in that bitch with my feet up. Yeah. For real. Did it ever cross your mind that Chief Keith will blow up to be like one of the biggest artists in our generation? Yeah, I always knew he was gonna be great. Like you knew he was gonna be that big? Yeah, I always knew he was gonna be great. He had too much talent. 
Shorty was 14, locked in, you know? <laughs> Shorty was like, he don't want to be no, he slept in the studio, you feel me? So it was like, hell yeah, I knew he was going to be great. Well, he didn't understand him, but he understood himself, you know? So yeah, hell yeah. I definitely knew he was going to be what he is right now. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's what's up. You know, a lot of people, they, they just look at what's displayed. They don't really know, you know, stuff like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What go on in the background. You say he was 13, 14. Yeah. Sleeping in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Because Sosa was like, what, 16 or 17? He was like 15 like, when he signed this deal. Type shit. You know, probably the youngest nigga that did that shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you had got locked up like right before everything started popping off? I got locked up right before the money came, I would say. You feel me? Because everything was already popping off. We young as hell getting in every club for free. You know what I'm saying? We in that motherfucker, just every club. This was our life every day, you know? So it was like, shit was happening, it's just no money was there for real. So I got locked up when the money came. Yeah, for sure that. Uh, when I look at, you know, your necklace, it say Kappa Dot, and then I see the same thing on your hat. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Can you tell us about your relationship with Capo? Like, uh, we know that that's a, you know, uh, a notable name in Chicago drill coach, but we haven't had too many stories about Capo. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say a relationship. That, I am him, shit. He a part of me. That's your uncle? Yeah. Okay. More like my brother, though, you know? So it's like, ain't, I wouldn't even put a relationship behind it. That's just me. And what was it about Cap, you know, that, that, that made him a standout, you know what I'm saying, and, and so special to, to, to his loved ones? Made him stand out. Cap always wanted to be great, though. He always, you know, he had to drive to him, you know. Even when he was playing sports, Cap just had to drive to be better than everybody, you know. So that will make him stand out. And then he was just love, you feel me? Who couldn't love him, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and, and of course, you was gone, you know, when he when he passed away, right? Yeah. Can you tell us when when did you call home and how you how did you receive that news? Who told you? I ain't gonna even lie to you. That man, that fucked me up right there. That I remember the day, the time, everything, what it looked like outside. Who you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I don't even want to talk about that right now. Word. Word. I ain't gonna lie to you. Word. Um, but we also noticed that you got a close relationship with. G Herbo, one of Chicago's finest artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, tell us about your relationship with her. That's bro. That's I, that's all I'ma say. That's that's my brother, you know. He he showed love to me when the times I needed love, you know? Yeah. That's bro. So tell us about your first day out though, you know what I'm saying? It's been eleven years. You finally get a breath of fresh air. What what does it feel like, first of all? <sighs> My first day out. To be honest, I ain't never. I really didn't feel like I, I left for real. Like I got out, everything. The surroundings looked different, but shit felt the same. Okay. I really didn't feel too much, but besides when I like got that different air in my lungs, you know. Right. It was like damn, it is a different air from the other side, cause you know they always say in jail we breathing different air. It is though, you know. That's a different type of air right there. Did them 11 years feel like one long ass day? That shit felt like a century, shit. <laughs> the day. Yeah. But I knew it would come to an end soon, though, you know? Yeah. I knew it would come to an end, though. Yeah. So how long you been out now? Shit going on like seven months. Okay. So, 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 so tell us how does 2023 feel? It's, hey, this shit, this shit. This shit all the same to me, man. All the same shit still going on. Some niggas broke. Some niggas getting some money. Some niggas playing crazy. Some niggas acting, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of comedians out here, I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Everybody ain't who they say they is, for real. So this shit still the same. Yeah. Um, I seen you post on your Instagram story something like, you know, I wish I never, I wish I never did that bid, you know, because, you know, some of the shit that I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? Um... Just speaking upon a lot of fool shit that I be seeing, you know. Mm-hmm. I ain't speaking particularly on no individuals, it's just a lot of shit that I be seeing, like shit wasn't how it was back then, you know, but knowing me knowing that it wasn't gonna never be the same, this is like, damn, this happening now? 
man, he f with him now, you know? Niggas do anything for some, some get a little bit of clout on their name, you know? Yeah. So that's what I was speaking on. Yeah. So that. Uh, we saw you had a welcome home party, you know what I'm saying? And, and like the guys, they, they, they blessed you real nice, you feel me? We saw a lot of uh, designer clothes and bank rolls and you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell us about that party. Tell us about that night. Yeah, it was a beautiful night. So that, was your, that was your welcome home party? Nah, that, you ain't even seen the welcome home okay. party yet. The welcome home party ain't even started though, man. That oh, was okay. just some little shit, you know. Mom's, you know, she felt the love for her son being back home type shit, you know. But it was, it was nice though. It was nice. Yeah. For sure. So you uh you pursuing a rap career now? Shit, why not? They say this where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and be in that spot right there. Well, now were you were you writing when you was locked up? Yeah, here and now, here and I wasn't too locked in with it. But yeah, I'm, I I didn't get into it though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we heard you featured on the song with Drench. Let them know or, or what what's called? Yeah. Smoke smoking smoke. Let them know. Let them know, right? That's let, what it's called. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Drinks featuring Slick. Tell us about that record. How did y'all collab and come up with it? Shit, how, how couldn't we collab? You know, like, that ain't no shit like, oh, uh, like, hey, man, I want to do it. You know, uh, that's, that's bro. Like, these are my people. Who you see me with is who I'm with. You feel me? Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's who I'm with. So, how, how we wasn't, you know? Right. It would have been wrong if we didn't. For sure. It's, now, is that your first record, though? Yeah, yeah, Type yeah. Type shit, yeah, right? Yeah. I know you got some more in the vault. Yeah, I'm going to keep some of this shit on tuck for right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, what's your, uh, what's, what, what, what's your goals with the rap shit? Like, you know, uh, is, 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 is it something you're trying to take serious, like, for a career? Or is it something, you know, you're looking at like a hobby? Shit, we all taking this shit serious. You see what these people trying to do to us, man. We ain't nothing but some rappers. That's it. We're trying to make a career out of this shit, man. That's all we is, rappers, man. They did it while we came. That's all we is. Yeah. To show that. So you um you you out, bro, it's been seven months, you know what I'm saying? And and like you said, the air feel, you know, it's a different type of air. It's a different type of energy. You see it, but at the same time it's the same stuff. That's going on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, so, so what's T Slick like, you know, five years from now? T Slick five years from now, shit. Man, a lot. You feel me? A lot, a whole lot of shit, man. Shit, you don't have to start paying me just to ask a question, goddamn. One question that? at that. <laughs> You hear me? So yeah, yeah T Slick gonna be a lot then. Like five years from now? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a lot, man. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, I feel like I feel like we've been um, you know, we, we talked to a lot of different guys from Chicago, you know, but now we kinda tapping into like the heavyweights. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is a guy who What you mean by heavyweights though? I mean you you, you like Mike Tyson around this month, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> You know, so I'm giving you your credit, you know what I mean? Because um, like I said, your face was Chief Keith profile pitch on Twitter yeah. this whole time. That might sound like that one shit, but think about how many Twitter followers Chief Keith got. Think about how big Chief Keith is and now that all the different shit he could have used as his profile picture. Right. It was your face. You know what I'm saying? That alone stand for something. Yeah. You feel me? So, you know, like to have this interview, like this, this bitch a classic already. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But what is it about yourself that you want the people to know? You know what I'm saying? Like, because all they saw is the face, but now they're getting to hear the voice, they're getting to feel the energy. What is it about yourself that you want the world to know? Shit, just tell them to stay tuned and watch me, man. That's all I want them to do, just watch me. Watch me be great, watch me be better, you know? Watch everything grow. That's all I want them to know, just see, man, just watch. Don't put out no image of what y'all want me to be. Just look. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You got any kids? Yeah. Work? Yeah. Tell us about fatherhood. How was that when you was locked up? Oh, that was tough. That was probably the toughest part of it. Mm -hmm. Being away, you know? Watching me grow up through visits and shit like that, you know? Yeah, that was kind of tough for me. But 
like I say, I, I had I had people to support my fatherhood, you feel me? So it's like they made sure she she got stood on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I really too much wanna wear all I was just missing is presence, you feel me? Other than that though, it, it was tough on me though for real. Do they um do they feel a way towards you for being absent? Who who you, who how you many, speaking? How many how many kids you got? I got one. I got son. Okay, son. How old is he? He's twelve. Yeah. So have you all been able to connect since you since you got out? Oh, for sure, yeah. But like, do he feel away? You know, cause you've been gone for so long. You know how how young men be. <clears throat> See, honestly, he was waiting on me to come home. Okay. That's what he was waiting on. Right. His life great again. Right. You know. That's what's up. So yeah, he was waiting on me to come home. Ain't no disconnect, none of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up, bro. Um, but, but you know, overall, bro, we talking to T Slick. You know. We got a 12 year old, and it's a lot of shorties out here that look up to us, you know what I'm saying? Rappers, you feel me? Yeah. Um, interviewers, entertainers, however. Uh, what's a message, you know, to the youth that you like to leave them? Message to the youth, man. Don't do drugs, man. <laughs> drugs get everybody fried, man. They just get to doing senseless shit. Tell them just pay attention and just learn, learn, you know what I'm saying? Learn. For real, like, really learn. Don't just do what you see the next one doing. You feel me? Pay attention, man. That's what's up. Now when you say don't do drugs, you mean like no weed? Don't do weed. drugs, man. <laughs> Tell you none. If you could, just stay clear. Just stay free. Drugs on free. You hear me? Drugs keep them shorties fried, man. So you don't smoke? Nah. When you asked me for some woods earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Gang don't need him, man. I don't do no smoking, man. Yeah, all right. Well, wait, nah, nah, he right. You know what I'm saying? Because I do smoke, but I'm here to tell you as a smoker that we do fry the brain. <laughs> See how these niggas acting early. I, I can't tell y'all who over here on the side. They ain't want to sit on the couch. <laughs> we got some real members in the building, you know. Them niggas had to make sure they had their weed. <laughs> <laughs> Just hey, don't so, do it. Hey, um... Just going back to Chief Keith real quick, you know, one of his biggest songs is Love Sosa. You know what I'm saying? And it's a guy on the intro that say, you know, if I catch another motherfucker talking shit about Chief Keith, yeah. I'm fucking beating their ass. Yeah. Was that true? Hell no, oh, man. Okay. What the f Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. Hey, DJ, you thought... fried, man. Stop, yeah. stop doing drugs, man. Way, uh... That's what I be talking about with the drugs, man. How was that me, man? All right, so who was that then? How the fuck Anybody was that know who dude was? Hell no, nah, man. That was like a random fan or something? It was a nigga who would see us about Chief Keith. That's who it was. That's why I thought it was you, gang. I saw, I saw your face on this picture. Fuck I'm you, trying to put two and two together. That's who it was. A nigga who would see us, man. That's how. He said, I got another motherfucker. I'm down. I think they linked some years later when Shorty like, grew up a little bit. Him and Keith got like a video together. Yeah, they linked some years later, yeah. Damn, I thought that was you, Slick. Hell no, nah, man. man. Hell no, nah, man. Uh. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. Look, T Slick, fresh home. You feel me? Man, welcome back. Appreciate it, man. Man, we wish you all the, you know what I'm saying, success in your future endeavors. You feel me? Any shout outs or closing remarks you want to lead the people? I don't do a lot of shout now, man. I shout out who I shout out because who I'm with. They know who I'm with, though, man. We ain't going to speak upon nothing, man. Just know we just playing with water, man. We getting wet. That's all. Just getting wet and glowing. Don't I look good? <laughs> That's all we doing. Getting wet and glowing, man. You know what's going on.
you go crazy.